Justin Trudeau is under tremendous pressure, especially because in the coming weeks, he's going to America to give speeches about Canadian rights and freedoms. It's kind of weird. And there's supposed to be a meeting with Trump, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I don't know if it's because Trump does not respect Justin Trudeau as not only a human, but a man and a leader, but we're going to have to find out together in this video, among many other things and updates across Canada. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. And uh, we're going to start off with a message from today's sponsor. I want to thank today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. We have teamed up together and they are willing to offer my audience 83% off by using code SUNSHINE, which can be found linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. There is a massive amount of censorship that's happening around the world, and Justin Trudeau is taking it into his own hands, which is why you need to protect yourself with a VPN. Now, what a VPN does is encrypts your personal information so that when you're browsing on different websites, your info isn't shared. It's almost a way of putting a cloak over yourself, and the favorite way that I go about doing this is with private internet access. Even when it comes to simple things like getting the right information from the news, there is massive amounts of censorship happening. And the only way that you can really get an unbiased opinion is with a VPN. But above and beyond that, if you want to get different shows and movies on different platforms such as Netflix or Disney, and there's these geolocation restrictions, the only really way around that is with a VPN such as private internet access. Not only can you do that from a computer or a tablet, but you can also do that from your phone, which is why private internet access is the best way that I like to go about it. It's user friendly, it's very affordable, and it's a best way of saying F you to the government. Once again, the link for private internet access and code sunshine is linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. And just remember, the government doesn't want you to hide your identity, but you should take the matter into your hands. And that's why private internet access and I have teamed up to offer you guys 83% off. Thank you, private internet access for sponsoring today's video. All right, so we have an update in the polls. It's not exactly favorable. I can be the first one to admit that. The Conservatives are now down to 217 projected seats. They were at 220 for a little bit. They need 172. That number will not change. Bottom line, 190, top end 236. It's kind of interesting because when they were up three, three more projected seats, the bottom line was, I believe, 191. So they went down one projected seat. Uh, or three projected seats, but the bottom line only went down one. So kind of interesting in that fact. 99% likely winning the most seats, 99% likely of winning a majority government. So we're still looking, I mean, it's a landslide, right? It's just how big of a landslide, how much do we want to crush the liberals' hopes and dreams? It's yet to be determined, but it's, it's still looking good, folks. Don't worry. Now, this is a very interesting story. According to the National Post, Justin Trudeau is letting King Charles down again. The Prime Minister has a long history of whitewashing the symbols and institutions that connect us with our history. You've been seeing that time and time again over the past few years where he's tearing down monuments, changing names of things, and now it's with our money. For those who obviously know, we have the Queen on our money. But Justin Trudeau hasn't rushed to start printing the king on our currency, in case you haven't noticed. So the federal liberals wasted no time scrubbing Canadian passports of national symbols and bucking King Charles's choice of the Tudor crown in favor of a Canadianized uh, version featuring maple leaves and a snowflake. But when it came time to releasing updated imagery of our head of state, the government seems to be in no hurry whatsoever. And this is pretty controversial. Because even with the passport change, it really showed that Trudeau is completely fine with eradicating, you know, Canadian culture and Canadian history and turning it into his own thing. He wants to put, you know, his final print on stuff. And that print is never good. And the new passports are absolute shite. Uh, but it's it's pretty interesting about the, the whole money aspect. On Monday, Canadians in most provinces will celebrate Victoria Day, a commemoration of the Queen Victoria's birthday that was proclaimed in 1845, making it Canada's 
oldest national holiday. Those buying a two to four or two four on their way to the cottage country or a hot dog at an outdoor festival may notice that the likeliness of the late Queen Elizabeth II still adorns our twenty dollar banknotes rather than the reigning monarch who was coronated a year ago this month. And they better get used to it. According to the Bank of Canada, new bills featuring King Charles won't be in circulation until 2027, four years after he ascended to the throne, which is crazy because there's a lot of speculation and rumors that he isn't very well. So it's kind of wild. He might not even be here in 2027. Very, very Weird. It's almost like they're just skipping King Charles and waiting for the next person. Bank of Canada says it's still in the process of designing the new note, which includes historical and visual research and talking to experts and the bank's indigenous advisory circle. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to siphon a bunch of money through their funnels and they got to hire people for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars worth of contract work, probably liberal insiders to design this thing, which... It's crazy. The Bank of Canada, in conjunction with our government, are absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, probably okay with printing money. They've done it over the past few years, but they're holding off on printing the new banknotes because they probably don't view King Charles as the actual king. But I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Next up, we have a post here from the Toronto Sun saying uh, from Lily saying, Trudeau's capital gains tax mess not going to plan his plan to launch class warfare over the capital gains tax has not worked out justin trudeau must have thought he had an easy win coming by raising the capital gains tax inclusion rate in his budget the plan was to shift the the conversation from the much hated carbon tax to the capital gains levy and paint all those opposed as on the side of the rich so the whole capital gains tax that comes to gear it's literally geared towards younger voters people that are fresh out of school people that have never voted or they've only had the opportunity to vote once the 18 to 29 demographic the capital gains tax literally targets like older people it literally that's literally what it is it's older people that have accumulated wealth that have accumulated money that have had you know one or two or multiple good investments throughout their life this is something that jesse trudeau has quite literally admitted himself so it's very weird that if there's any older people anyone that has money anyone that you know or done a good investment or invests or, or wants to make money if you want to make money or if you have money It's very bizarre that you would ever support Justin Trudeau now that he's uh, proposed this in the new budget. It's it's kind of weird, but it, it makes sense from a strategic point for them, for the liberals. It doesn't make sense for you know, common sense, but for them to go after, you know, the not so smart generation, the newbies to voting, the people that are just like, oh yeah, the government's here to help me. Yeah. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. You'll you'll clue in eventually. Hopefully you haven't screwed over our country by then, but you'll clue in eventually. All right, so now let's get into this whole Trump thing here. Before we get into the news of, you know, Justin Trudeau, who's supposed to potentially meet Trump in the coming weeks, we're going to take a look at Trump and, and uh, Trudeau meeting in the past. His other technique, the reassuring top tap. We saw it in action during that 19-second handshake with Japan's Shinzo Abe. Two taps and two yanks for those keeping score. So now you know some of his moves. How did Trudeau do in his first round? No yanks, no taps. Trudeau almost leads with his own move. We'll call it the deltoid brace. But round two in the Oval Office is a different matter. Looks short and sweet, right? No special moves here. But one frame that's getting a lot of attention, albeit out of context, is this one, shot from Reuters. The front page of The Guardian, GQ and New York Magazine, and all the Photoshop challenges imagining their own version of events. From jokes about the size of his hands to a hologram of the Death Star. A few (laughs) Canadian flavors too. Some poutine on a plate. And last year's favorite, Tiny Drake. That's pretty funny. Trump's uh, Trump's handshakes are kind of world renowned. He does a very good job of pulling people in and dominating. He might think of this as it's stupid, it's silly, doesn't mean anything, but 
on the on a global stage when people are looking at leaders these little micro movements they make a difference and it boosts morale when you're on obviously the winning side and Trudeau I gotta say he, he didn't do half bad in comparison to other world leaders shaking Donald Trump's hand but you know, all of his controversies and, and skeletons in the closet do haunt Justin Trudeau, and Trump has acknowledged this. Mr. President, your reaction to Justin Trudeau, can he survive this controversy? Well, I was hoping I wouldn't uh, be asked that question. It had to be you that asked it. You, you had to ask me that question, right, Justin? I'm surprised, and I was more surprised when I saw the number of times. And, you know, I've always had a good relationship with Justin. Uh, I just don't know what to tell you. It's, I was surprised by it, actually. Can you take a guess as to which controversy he's talking about? He's talking about blackface. Of course, it was a surprise to a lot of people. Now let's take a look at the article that uh, he's supposed to be potentially meeting Donald Trump uh, very soon. So U.S. ambassadors not aware currently of any plans for Trudeau and Trump meeting. Let's watch this video here by CTV. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is set to deliver a speech to one of the biggest unions in North America this week. On Tuesday, he'll speak at the Service Employees International Union North American Convention in Philadelphia to promote Canada-U.S. relations and trade. It comes as the Trudeau government is preparing behind the scenes for a possible Donald Trump presidency and the potential economic impacts that could bring. Trump has threatened to impose a 10% tariff on all imports, including those from Canada. And according to a recent report from Scotiabank, a quote, Trump victory and follow through on the policy side would likely see higher inflation than what could be expected in a Biden victory. Canada's ambassador to the U.S., Kirsten Hillman, is here now. Hi, ambassador. Very good to see you. As always, thanks so much for making the time. Happy to be with you. I wanted to start off and just look ahead to next week and the prime minister's trip to the U.S. And more specifically, what the objective in your view is in addressing this group. The prime minister is coming to Philadelphia to address the services union, international services union, its Canadian and its American members. At it, they have a conference every four years, so he's been invited to address them. Um, and so I'm very excited about that for just for that reason, but also as an opportunity to highlight that we have this unique feature in our relationship, which is this bilateral uh, community of workers. Um, and I, you know, I think it's just a, it's an expression of the fact that we have such integrated economies, we have such integrated workforces um, and, and shared values in the labor space. Are there other significant meetings that the prime minister will be taking while he's in the U.S. next week? Yes. So we also have quite a robust business um, agenda. We are going to be meeting with a wide variety of businesses, not only from Pennsylvania, but some coming in from out of state um, for, a, for a few reasons. One, for, from a local perspective, Canada is Pennsylvania's number one trading partner. Uh, Canadian companies I did not know that. create over 60,000 jobs in the state. Um, we are by far their biggest trading partner, so we, we buy more from, uh, from them than their next four export destinations combined. So it's an incredibly robust trading relationship. And so we want to talk to some of those companies and say, okay, this is great. Uh, tell us what's working well. Tell us how we can build on the momentum. Uh, Canada and the United States last year had their biggest trading year in history. We traded more between our two countries than ever in the history of our two countries. Um, so it's important on us to make sure that we maintain that trajectory. And we want to talk to the people you know, that are responsible um, for creating those jobs and that activity about, about that fact and about what we do to make sure we carry on, as I say, on that trajectory. Wow, I had no idea that Canada had such a strong business relationship and trade relationship with what is it, Pennsylvania. That's that's pretty interesting. I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is going to be thanking them for all of their money. After Justin Trudeau proposed the 63 or 66% capital gains tax uh, increase, America, Joe Biden followed suit. I think they're, they're at like 44%. So seems to be you know, a, a reoccurring theme that first world countries are taxing to 
death. You know, people that have done good or are trying to do good. They're trying to squeeze people down into a certain income bracket. But let's know what you guys think down below in the comments. It'd be pretty interesting if Trump did go to that and meet with Justin Trudeau uh, and just kind of establish a little bit more dominance uh, onto Canadian politics. And, you know, even if he dropped, if Trump said some things like, yeah, I'm looking forward to staying in here and in, in in a year with Pierre Polyev, right? Say that to Trudeau's face, just get under his skin. I would absolutely love to see that. And I think that most Canadians would too, but I'd love to know if you guys would like to see that as well. Next up, we have an update from the international student protest on the East Coast who beat a bad guy by Harrison Faulkner. I've covered, or I've shared his videos uh, over the past few days about this. There's a lot of international students that, you know, uh, went to, PEI to work or go to school and they were apparently promised uh, this permanent residency within a certain amount of time and according to their own words they have been rug pulled by the government the government changed the rules once once a bunch of these international students came to PEI so that they just can't get permanent residency anymore and they're forced to go back so as a result they are protesting and their new tactic is to protest and make videos apparently entirely in Punjabi. And they're asking for the support of Islanders, people on PEI, uh, in a language they don't understand, and that's an interesting tactic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what they're saying, so we're not going to watch this, but this does actually seem directed towards the Islanders PEI. We need your support, Islanders, right? PEI is our home. Peaceful protest, powerful words. Uh, that that almost seems like a chat GPT generated um, banner for a protest, but nonetheless, they are trying their very best to get uh, some sort of reaction or support. And I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the, in these comments, because when we look at the comments of this video that Harrison Faulkner has posted, it's kind of one-sided. India is your, well, Indian, but India is your home. Go back. You don't belong here. They didn't even really attend school. They worked at Tim Hortons. They were scamming school so they could come to Canada and work in Canada. Now their visas are up and they're supposed to go home. So let them go home or apply the right way. Teach them our Canadian laws first. Thanks. Deport these frauds. Someone says Punjabi. That's definitely directed at our federal government. Yeah. Okay. So somebody apparently has done the translation. While imperfect, a useful translation. Let's take a look at this. All the brothers and sisters that today for a few days very little response is being received from my brave brothers don't think that we who I feel like the subtitle stopped when they should have kept going but nonetheless they are doing their absolute best and I'd really like to know what you guys think down below in the comments because again I can just continue scrolling through the comments but it's not really changing it seems to be very one sided that you tried your best it didn't work time to go home so yeah it's it's turning into be a bit of a controversial topic uh next up we have a video that has resurfaced from a while ago this video represents how the majority of canadians feel towards our current sitting prime minister canadians need to be pushed to the limit to react like this to someone we are at our breaking point and he keeps telling us everything is fine where Justin Trudeau has been swarmed by people. I think this is Hamilton. Yeah, 
that's a lot of people, that's a lot of anger, that's a lot of emotions flying through the air. And then finally, we have <laughs> a liberal propaganda video. I can't believe this is actually happening. So Rex Glaser uh, has this to say in response to the video that uh, Karina Gould has posted here. So let's take a look. You, you disgusting coward with comments off after you use the Charter of Rights to wipe your arses with so this is Karina Gould is posting this propaganda video about how Pierre Polyev is apparently after your rights. When someone tells you they will start taking your rights away, believe them. And when that someone is Mr. Polyev, remember he's done it before. This long weekend, tell him the charter belongs to Canadians and to keep his hands off our rights and freedoms. It doesn't make any sense. First of all, the comments are disabled. This has uh, almost half a million views just on this account, uh, on Karina Gould's account. People have reshared re this. Probably has a million to two million views across you know X right now. It's wild that the liberals have the audacity to say that another party is after your rights and freedoms when they're the ones that have stripped Canadians of their rights and freedoms and are looking to continue to do it at a level that we have never seen before in Canada. It's turning our country into a communist dictatorship. I just, I can't, I can't believe the lack of self-awareness and the audacity. But let's take a look at this video here. It's probably going to piss a few of you off, but let's take a look at it anyways. As we head into the May long weekend, here's something that we should all reflect on. Two weeks ago, Mr. Polyev said the quiet part out loud. In speaking with the Canadian Police Association, he casually mentioned that he was going to make his own laws and use the notwithstanding clause to make them charter compliant. He basically said that he was going to start taking away the rights of Canadians. But he intimated, don't worry, not your rights, the rights of others. Now, when someone tells you that they're going to start taking away the rights of Canadians, alarm bells should go up because it might not be your rights today, but it could very well be your rights tomorrow. And let's not forget, Mr. Polyev has done this before. When he was Minister of Democratic Reform, he was the first Canadian minister, to my knowledge, to take away the democratic rights of Canadians. He made it harder for 500,000, half a million Canadians to vote federally. And alarm bells went up at the time whether it was elections experts, observers, academics, the media, Canadians writ large were concerned that he was making Canada less democratic. And if you are worried and watching what's happening in the United States with horror when it comes to reproductive rights, just remember his anti-women's rights, conservative MPs and the anti-choice uh, movement here in Canada are already thinking about how they can apply those same laws and make it harder for Canadian women to access abortion and health care here in Canada. Now, when I was Minister of Democratic Institutions, I reversed his anti-democratic laws and made it easier for hundreds of thousands of Canadians to vote. Because at the end of the day, I believe in people's rights to vote and I believe in their right to democracy. And our government is committed to making sure that we uphold the rights of Canadians, whether it's their right to access abortion, their right to health care, or their right to participate in democracy. We are going to do that. So this long weekend, I challenge you to figure out how you are going to continue to protect our rights and freedoms. And I'll give you a hint. It starts by telling Mr. Polyev to keep his hands off of the rights and freedoms of all Canadians. That is hilarious that she has the audacity to make a video like this. And they're trying to make it more relatable to people. They're actually copying Pierre Polyev's style, which is pretty interesting, walking and talking. And next they're going to, you know, add in some edits and some music and even their own uh, question period clips on their, you know, respective social media handles the moment question period ends it's, it's just kind of funny it's kind of funny that you're dealing with you know liberal propaganda but we are heading into election season and i was wrong folks i was absolutely wrong i thought this wouldn't start until probably this time next year or at least the end like the winter uh the winter months of 2024 right so still what six months away but 
apparently it's starting now. This is gonna be it's gonna be a long ride until the election season. It's gonna be a lot of videos like this. They're gonna amp up and they're gonna probably get worse. I'd love to know what you guys think down below the comments of that video. That's where we're gonna end it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna keep it under the 25, 30 minute mark. Thanks so much for watching. One last thank you to today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and go see the link down in the description or the pinned comment to get yourself a VPN for private internet access. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.